Have you ever wondered whether a campaign in your Google Ads application is serving correctly or why it's not serving at all? Have you ever wished for a way to understand exactly the reasons why a campaign is not serving optimally and how to optimize its serving? Have you ever felt puzzled by the different status fields that the Google Ads API exposes for a campaign, wondering what each of them actually represents? I'm Mattia Tomazone, and these, and some more, are the problems that we are going to address in this video, thanks to a new field that was added in version 12 of the Google Ads API, the campaign primary status and its close relative, the campaign primary status reasons. First of all, a campaign's primary status is a read-only field, meaning that you cannot change its value when a mutate request. This sets it apart from the status field. That is the one you change when you want to pause a campaign or to remove it. It is also different from a campaign's serving status, since it gives you more details about the reasons why a campaign may not be serving. This is because a campaign's primary status is determined by aggregating several different signals, belonging not just to the campaign itself, but also to the entities that belong to it, like its bidding strategy, its budget, its ad groups, and its ads. While this means that it can take a few seconds or minutes for a campaign's primary status to be updated whenever something changes in a campaign, it also means that a campaign's primary status and its reasons give you and your users a very precise indication of the issues your campaign may be experiencing. For instance, by just looking at a campaign's status or at its serving status, you may not notice that its ad groups or its keywords are paused. By looking at a campaign's primary status, you will see that it has value not eligible, and that in its reasons there may be ad groups paused or keywords paused. This will give you, or your users, a precise indication of what to change to make your campaign start serving again. Similarly, you may not see that your campaign is not serving up to its full potential due to limitations in its budget or in its bidding strategy, or in its targeting. All these possibilities are covered by the primary status limited that can be caused by one of bidding strategy limited, bidding strategy constrained, budget constrained, or search volume limited. By showing the reason or reasons why a campaign has primary status limited, you will help your users understand exactly where they need to intervene to optimize the serving of their campaign, or maybe even be able to perform these optimizations automatically in your application. So for instance, you may choose to automatically adjust the campaign budget or to expand the campaign's targeting by adding some more keywords. The exact choice will depend on the logic of your application, but the primary status reasons will give you a detailed indications of the areas where you can intervene to optimize the performance of your campaign. Now, there may be several reasons impacting a campaign's primary status. So for instance, a campaign may have in its primary status reasons filled both ad group paused and campaign removed. What will the primary status be in this case? Will it be not eligible because its ad groups are paused? Or will it be removed because the campaign is removed? Hmm. The answer is that the primary status will be removed because it's a permanent state and thus it takes precedence over an eligible, which is a temporary problem that can be fixed, in this case, for instance, by unpausing the ad groups of this campaign. So, basically, the campaign primary status reasons field tells you everything that is going on in a campaign, while the campaign primary status field collates all of the issues that a campaign may have in a single status that summarizes what is going on with it. So, now you know all there is to know about a campaign's primary status and its reasons. All that is left for you to do now is to integrate it in your applications, and of course, to like the video if you liked it, and to subscribe to the channel to always be up to date with what's going on in the Google Ads API. Thanks for watching.